everyone, it's Lisa. I'm just putting the finishing touches on the Superman vs. Batman logo, and then I'm going to show you how to draw it. To achieve this effect, you're going to need a black marker, a red marker, and a flesh-colored marker, as well as pencil eraser and a ruler. Uh, let's get started. And the first thing that we need to do is just lay this out on our page. I'm going to use a ruler because I think proportions are super important in logos. And our logo on this page can be 13 centimeters high. So you can see up here in the corner, you can see the sample of the logo that I have drawn. And I am filling the page. So it's going to be 13 centimeters high and it's going to be 26 centimeters wide. So I'm going to mark that off right away and I'm also going to make a couple of other guidelines within this area. I'm going to mark off six inches, six centimeters and eight centimeters and also 18 and 20 because these are key proportions in the wings of the bat which are going to establish the entire um, figure. So I'm just going to draw some very pale lines here just to keep this in place. Now you don't have to do these grids, but it is a very helpful method to ensure proportions. So I'm just finishing off these. I'm drawing the lines um, even at 0 and 26 just to make sure that everything is filled in. And I'm just going to draw one straight down the middle also at 13. So I know some of you are wondering, you think I went too fast and you don't know what numbers those were. So this whole thing is 13 centimeters from top to bottom. And then I have um, parallel lines from 0, 6, 8. Uh, this is 13 because it's the middle. And then also at 18, 20, and 26. Okay, uh, last thing we're going to do is just indicate how low these bat tip wings come down, which is just going to be to the 8 centimeter mark. And I'll mark that on both sides. Just a little dot here at 8 centimeters. And uh, we're good to go. Okay, that's it. <laughs> so again, we're aiming for the picture here that's in the corner. This is the one that I have already drawn. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to start off in the top corner here where the bat uh, wings begin. So we're going to swoop down to a flat line that comes in toward the middle. And here we're just going to keep going straight across. And then when we get just past this next line, we're going to curve up again. So this is the top of the bat's wings and also the top line of the S from Superman. But we do see the bat's head coming up in behind here. So we're going to draw a line that angles out just a tiny bit this way. Well, more straight up and down. And then it's going to come in toward the body and over. And then up like this and down. So here we have the bat head just here in the middle. And a little further over. All right, so the next thing we can do is place the wing on the side here. So there's a fairly long line that arches up like this, and then it gets a little bit steeper and a little bit steeper still. So that just curves it nicely. So again, on this side, it's gonna come arching down and then down like this and then down to the point. So these should be roughly symmetrical on either side. The bottom of the bat wing is going to come just up a bit like this and then in toward this line we drew, we're going to have the down and up jag here. Now, if I'm going too fast for you, just hit the pause button, rewind a little bit if you need to, and, and meet us back where you were. All right, so now this line is going to come just up a little bit more, angling slightly in. And now we're at the point for the Superman, um, the bottom of the Superman corner. I'm just going to bring this down. It's actually going to end right about here. Pull this into the corner and then same thing from here coming back out. We're aiming to be parallel to this line right here. So let's just do that. Keeping it parallel here. So now we're coming back up to meet here. Nice. Okay, and next we'll just do the same thing we did on the other side, which is a very slight angle downward and then a nice V down and up and then coming over and curving in. All right, so this is the full outline of the bat. This was the easy part. Now we get to fill in with the Superman. So what we're going to do here is we're going to extend this line until we reach this other uh, vertical line. 
And then we're going to angle our Superman logo just a bit curvier than the standard one. Uh, you can see on the sidebar here, I've drawn the actual Superman logo in a previous video from a couple of years ago, and it's a little more square than this one. Uh, so when we get to this edge here, we've just extended the line on the inside until we reach this other guideline, and then we're going to curve up until we hit this, um, this first guideline that we've already made. Now we're going to come across the top and touch in where the bat is. So this also has a bit of a curve to it. It does meet when you get up to this very top part, but it was running um, a little bit of a distance away there at first. I'll just clean that up so you can see what I've done. Awesome. Okay, so the next thing we're going to do is fill in with the Superman. And first thing we could do here is just draw the bottom of the S by making the inside corner section here. My pencil must have a funny sharpness to it. It keeps dragging me in a funny direction. Um, so we'll just draw this bottom of the S down here. So this is going to be the inside of the logo. And then we're going to hop over and make um, the swooping teardrop shape that falls in the middle here. This makes any sense. So we're going to leave the distance in here for the letter. We're going to come down from here curving and over and then a teardrop shape back up this way. So this is going to be black just in here. Just so is this. And here's going to be the S swooping around big through here. So this is actually the edge of the S that's come up from down here and we're going to have another piece missing on this side that runs parallel to this and over and then the S swoops in. So all I've done here now is made an outline section where the black is going to fill in from behind. So this is like a metallic shield over the top of the bat logo. So this is going to be um, colored in more darkly black here. And okay, coming across the top, we're going to have more of this outline, and then we're going to have another teardrop shape coming from here. So this is just defining the top of the S, like so. And this will also be filled in black. And then from here, we're going to have the uh, parallel to the edge, and then an angle, this reminds me of like of a church window maybe, because it arches down a bit like this on the side. This will also be filled in with black. And then we're going to have a longer section here where the S sort of gets going because the S is going to have this um, stylized look about it. So from here now, we're going to take a really long line because this S has a big arch up to about here and then it's going to turn back on itself and it's going to head back over here. It's going to come just a little bit closer as you approach and then curving down. So then we're going to close this off right here. So this is also going to be black. So as you can see, these are all of the outlines um, from the main S because it starts here and it swoops all the way around and kind of back on itself, unlike the original Star uh, Superman logo. So then there are extra lines within this logo that give it that embossed sort of feel or metallic feel. So we're going to have a line here and then this part is really kind of interesting and maybe hard to see, but we're going to have, it reminds me like of a Pepsi swoop or something. I don't know, sorry, Pepsi, sorry, Superman. So it's going to swoop down this way and then up and over really quite high and then in a little higher and then right to the edge. So this is just a, a feature line, like a texture within the logo. And when it's, when we're coloring it, we're going to leave a lot of white right around this line to give it that reflective quality. So this is the bigger one that's near the bottom of the logo and it's brighter. Now there is another one that comes just below this, let me bring this in, uh, just below this that's going to not come out as, as brightly but has a similar shape to the line. So it's going to follow parallel just along here and then it sort of blends into this other section as we get closer. You can sort of see that line in there in the actual logo. And then we have it meeting another line that's making its way this way and curving around. So, you know, this is, this is the very fancy way of doing this. You could just stop before and color this part all red. You don't have to make all these extra lines, but it is what makes it, um, it gives it that cool, that very cool um, metallic look, all of these extra lines coming through. 
All right, so then here we're just going to close this off with the S coming down this way. So here we have it, the inside of this S with lots of lines. Okay, there is one more line, or maybe two actually, that come from the top of this S. So we're going to start to swoop it from here, and we're just going to bring it down and connect. It's just a curve into here. And then we're going to add another level to this line, which comes in close and comes over, sort of stays in between these two, and then blends in together on this other side. So those are all of the fancy lines that you need to draw this swirling S. And what I'm going to do for those ones is I'm going to go over them with my finer point Sharpie. And then I'm going to use my dark Sharpie and outline all of these other main lines. So you can go ahead and uh, catch up with me, but I'm going to do this in time lapse. All right, so there was just one line that I haven't included here yet, and it's the one that comes underneath here, where there's going to show a really reflective section. So going right to uh, Sharpie with this, but it's basically just a parallel line that runs along underneath the S, and this is going to be colored in in a very light color to give that impression of brightness, and then the black will be filled in here. All right, I think we're ready to go to marker. So I'm going to use red for the S, and as I said, I'm going to use sort of a, a version of kind of a light pinkish color through here just to give it that metallic sort of look. This is more like a flesh tone. I could add some red to it after if I'm not happy with the color that this is. But um, And I also added just a few little lighter lines, uh, a few little shorter lines just in this area here to give the um, idea of the reflection where I wanted to make sure I didn't color in with red. But I'm just going to continue with my flesh tone here and add these highlights in with my marker so that I can um, make sure they're included. And then I'm going to go over the rest of the S with um, red and try not to hit these little lines. So I'll do this in time lapse also. All right, so there is going to be another step where I turn this red into the darker mottled red using um, a crayon sort of china marker just to add more texture and dimension to this. But what you can see I've done is I've colored red throughout this whole area and I've left um, flesh color reflections along all of the edges where these lines have met with each other. It looks kind of complicated, but it really wasn't that hard to do. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back in and fill in in all of the areas that are pure black which will include the entire bat wings, and also just this one little stretch of the S. It's got some really severe shadows in it, so I'm including that as being pure black. And there's also another line right over here that is pure black. So I'm just going to go right over my red here with a tiny bit of black, just to give that some depth through there. And now I'm going to go in and color in um, all of these little sections in between in black and also the wings and the head. So obviously I could do this in time lapse. All right, so there you have all of the solid marker work for this particular figure. And now comes the fun part, which is giving all of this red area sort of a metallic um, mottled, I don't know, it even reminds me of marbleized or something. So I'm just going to use my black, mm, I'm going to call it crayon, and I'm going to make little squiggles all over this um, red section. And I'll make it darker in some areas. I'll even make a little bit of shadow right along the edge here. But basically I'm just going to dirty it up so that it looks a little bit more like the um, metallic logo. So I'm just going to go through that. I don't know if you want me to talk you through this or not. It's not a, it's not a real um, scientific, artistic technique that I'm using. It's just the way I decided to do it. So I'm going to go, like if I can color fairly faintly over all of this and give it a less harsh red look, especially around these edges where the two logos are blending, it's sort of going from red to black in these outer edges. So I'm just giving it a little bit more um, solid fill texture through here and even down at this bottom section you'll still see the red through it because the bread marker is going to hold up underneath this darker black crayon and the texture of this of this crayon or china marker is waxy but not um, full coverage 
So you can sort of play with it and add different textures. Like through here, um, the logo that I'm looking at really has lots of darker veins and lines and modeling through here. So I'm just going to keep working on this until I like the way it looks. But essentially, I don't really want it to look red anywhere. I just want it to look like there was red back there. So I'm going to keep on adding um, strokes and squiggles until I'm satisfied. The trick is you it's way easier to put it on than it is to take it off. So you don't want to go overboard until you're until you're satisfied. So you can look at my final product up here in the corner as your model or you can just um, follow your own ideas about this but essentially I'm just adding in lots of veins and lines and squiggles through this whole red section and I feel like it's darker I feel like it's darker in these two areas um, and then it's also quite dark through the top so I'm just gonna go ahead and finish this so I hope you enjoyed watching me draw this today I hope you drew it too if you're drawing it um, you can maybe let me know if, give me some comments in the comment section about how you found the tutorial did you like that I gave you all of these um, number measurements I know some people are not they don't want the technicals they just wanted me to show them how but if you wanted it to look just like this really it has to be proportionally accurate and the best way for anyone uh, amateur artist or otherwise to do a good job on proportions is to have um, uh, things measured out to match what you're trying to achieve so yeah you just need to have a plan and go with it so I, I believe in measuring. It's kind of like that old carpenter saying, measure twice, cut once. If you want to do it right the first time and not waste paper or wood if you're a carpenter, then it's important to know what you need um, and measure it. So so yeah, that's, that's my plan. That's why I did it this way. I guess if you made it to this far into the video, you probably didn't mind. <laughs> All right, so that's it. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time. Comment, like, subscribe.